My name is Peter Allen Froelich. I'm an assistant professor of English at Penn State Hazleton. This is my first year on the tenure track. I spent two years at Penn State Shenango as an instructor of English. And then a long time before that, I was a graduate student at University Park in 91 to 93. My name is Maggie Gordon Froelich. I'm an assistant professor of English at Penn State Hazleton. Uh, I've been with the University College of Penn State for three years now. I started, I did two years at Penn State Shenango, the Shenango campus, and I've been here at the Hazleton campus for one year. The course that I was using digital media in most this semester is English 15, Rhetoric and Composition. It's a first year writing course that just about everyone in the university is required to take. Uh, it's a general education course, uh, so it's a freshman writing course. The objectives are to familiarize the students with uh, issues of rhetoric, that is, being conscious of writing for an audience, being conscious of writing with a purpose, writing for an audience. And the composition side of it is actually doing writing. For our class, we wanted them to do something that was historical or culture studies cultural studies based. So we said pick a year in American history, research what happened that year. And all the different projects came out of that research. So for the first project, they simply defined things that happened in that year. Then they picked an artifact from that year to analyze what it said about American culture, that this artifact, it could be an iPod, it could be a, a board game, it could be a car. What does that product say about American culture based on how it was marketed or how it was used by people? They wrote a story set in their year. They analyzed a film from their year. And then traditionally what we had them do was to come back to the year in review assignment, that first assignment where they just said what happened. And we asked them to synthesize this time, to take all the analysis that they did over the course of the semester and pull it all together to say, what was it that made your year distinctive in American history? How can you connect the personalities from your year, the major events, the film that you analyzed, and the cultural artifact? How do they speak to each other? And so for this semester, we turned that assignment into the final film project. So our assignment was we asked them to do a 10, a 10 minute video or 10 minutes or less uh, video in which they uh, came up with a thesis that characterized that particular era some thesis and then organize their content to support that thesis. Each of their years had to be represented. We wanted to insist that each of them had to be on camera for at least some period of time. That was part of the, uh, part of the requirements. And so we worked out at the end of the semester to have them work in groups and teams. And that actually worked much better for the assignment to get them to synthesize the information from the from all of their years. So, so we tried to put them in groups so that instead of having a student working on 1965, we had a student working on the 1960s. Even if the group got together and said, the 1960s was all about the Vietnam War, they couldn't create a video about the Vietnam War. They had to show us how the Vietnam War was somehow connected to psychedelic music, to the hippie fashions, to um, a Richard Nixon speech and that sort of thing in order to really get full credit for the assignment. And we asked them to find period video if they could find something that was uh, not under copyright or Creative Commons licensed. We asked them to find um, period or appropriate music. So for instance, they might not be able to use the Beatles song that they wanted, but they might be able to find some kind of um, psychedelic inspired contemporary song that was Creative Commons licensed. So it would give them the feel of 1969 without breaking any laws. Uh, in the group that did the 1960s, they decided revolution was going to be their theme. And so everything that they did, and everything that each of the students had gathered all tied into that theme of revolution. And I think that the variety of content 
was a real strength. I think the strongest videos were ones that where students were able to tie in a variety of content using the tools that we were giving them. Actually, there was a lot of anxiety about it. I think talking about it a lot in class, showing them sample videos, uh, giving them a sense of what is acceptable, what they could do, giving them lots of ideas for what other people in other freshman classes were doing or what other people at Penn State were doing, seeing that other people like themselves were doing these things and could do these things. I, I think that they very quickly became very excited. I think our students were anxious about the idea of a video project because they thought the skills that were required would be video editing skills or something to do with camera work. That actually turned out to be the easy part. And the skills that were required were ones that would be familiar to any teacher of a freshman composition class. They had to devise a thesis. They had to research their topic. They had to um, creatively incorporate various elements and organize their thoughts. They had to um, work together as a group. They had, and so, and time management was a huge part of that. Um, overall, I think those traditional elements of compositional strategy in terms of finding a topic, fleshing out the topic, organizing your thoughts, polishing your thoughts, editing the final product, those things are part and parcel of all of the papers that our students write. And the process of putting the video together followed that same pattern. And so in the end, I think our students found that the actual work with the computers was new and different, but that it followed the expectations that they had for how work in an English class should proceed. On the days when we actually had our students screen their videos for each other, there was a real excitement and a real sense of pride in what they had accomplished. And the only specific complaint that I heard from our students was they wished we had done a short video project at the beginning of the semester so they knew what video could do so that they could make their final projects that much more complete and uh, really show off what the project was capable of doing. What we tried to do was to get them to think about their writing as something that was going to be published before a general audience on the World Wide Web. So instead of saying, write as if you were writing for a magazine, now we said, write a blog and hit publish, and it's on the web, and anyone can read it. So think about who you're writing for, think about who would have an interest in your writing. And so every assignment had that built-in sense of purpose and exigency built into it. Having them make a video was actually a much better project than that straightforward conventional essay had been, because it asks them to conceive of how do I bring this material together? How am I going to, what content am I going to bring together? Am I going to use still images? Am I going to use video? Am I going to try to find uh, original m music, original content to the period? Am I going to create content for this? Are we going to use voiceover for this? And so even the act of creating the f film, creating the video itself, is asking them to think about how, how do we synthesize information. Since they want to create this content themselves, I think that they see it as far more valuable to their own real world experience. And so I think in that sense, it very much supports the essential idea of English 15, which is getting students thinking about rhetoric and composition, is extremely useful to them not only in their subsequent college career, because they're coming in the door as freshmen, as first semester, second semester freshmen, taking, these, taking this course and being exposed to creating a podcast, creating a video, creating a website, writing a blog, doing these things in their freshman year so that when they're in their major, when they're 
specializing in college and being asked to do these things, it's not the first time that they've been asked to do it. So they have more confidence to go out and try new things in their field. I think that's really important. And I think that what we're seeing in the workplace, I think that these are skills that students are going to be asked to have in the workplace. So I think that even if they never make another video, even if they never make another podcast at Penn State, they've had this experience so that when they go out in the workplace and someone says, can you do this? They say, yeah, yeah, I can. Audio podcasts and video messages are how people are going to communicate with their constituents. It's how businesses are going to reach out to each other. We're not going to be traveling for business. We're going to be doing, you know, video conferencing. And if this is the world that our students are going to step into, then as a university, I think we have a responsibility to introduce them to that world, get them used to working with these technologies. And if freshman English can be a part of that, then I want to be a part of, of making that happen.